a young 
necessary and it annoyed me so much. These are quotes from, I don't know, different influential people from philosophers to business mo moguls, mo 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 moguls, I don't know, I've always seen that word, not heard it. Anyway, and um, as I was going through, I was like, a lot of these are just like quotes from which is ironic because this is the, um, is this like the 15th anniversary edition or this, this is like a new edition, a newer edition. And in the introduction he specifically says he tried to make this book more inclusive, more inclusive and not just for like the average like businessman. But I thought it was ironic because, um, I decided
connection so like I said you could learn something as well and um, so basically it's centered around the protagonist Evie who goes to live with her uncle who owns this museum of the occult in New York City so just everything's spooky and wonderful like her uncle owns this like spooky museum and I was so sad I was really hoping that the museum was real you know, like, a, I guess a museum that would just track everything, like, kind of like things like the Salem Witch Trials and different, like, spiritual and, like, spooky occult things from different cultures around the world. I'm sure something like that exists, but unfortunately, the Museum of the Occult um, in New York City is not a real museum, but it sounded amazing. Uh, anyway, let's read you the little synopsis blurb from the book. Something dark and evil has awakened. Evie O'Neill has been exiled from her boring old hometown and is shipped off to the bustling streets of New York City, baby. And she is positively ecstatic. It's 1926 and New York is filled with speakeasies, Zeigfeld girls, pickpockets. The only catch is that she has to live with her uncle, Will, and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. Evie worries her uncle will discover her darkest secret, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. But when the police find a murdered girl branded with a cryptic symbol and Will is called to the scene, Evie realizes her gift could help her catch a serial killer. So, there's sort of Evie's storyline with her uncle, but then the other friends that are in the book, they've got their own storylines going, and then everything kind of like emerges and like weaves together. Um, that's so good, and so I've read the first one, and at the moment I'm reading the second book, and again, I'm so annoyed at myself, I've left a big gap in between. I know. 
So, I just think to myself, like, you know, you did the best that I could at the time. At that time, I had really bad mental health. Like, there was nothing else that I could have done. Even if I had managed to walk into the interview, I would have done a rubbish interview because I was terrified and scared of, like, everything and everyone. And even if I did get the job, which again, no guarantee that I would have got the job, I may have had to quit after a day because my anxiety would have been so bad. So, I, you know, I just try and say, you did the best you could with the resources that you had at that time. Like, I didn't have a psychologist at that time. I couldn't afford one, you know? So, that's just a way how I try and, like, reframe and I'm okay with, like, what happened in my past and maybe can be as well. And anyway, with that whole experience, when I was able to afford a psychologist, when eventually I like, got off the waiting list for one, that was something I discussed with her, like, you know, in the past I had this interview and I was too anxious to go and do it, and so, like, I was able to, like, learn from that, and so she said, because I, like, almost got to the interview, like, I actually got on the train, I got to the place, I got dressed up, I left the house, I was so 